Hello mga kabulero! This is the video that relates to the image classification model using AlexNet and GoogleNet. By the way, I added this section in my digital image processing series to cover the convolutional neural networks or CNN. I will just discuss this briefly since the algorithm and the process behind the classification is a bit sophisticated. So let's get started. CNN or convolutional neural network models are divided into two major parts. First is the feature learning and second is the classification section. In SVM, we have tackled on how the features are extracted as well as how the training is performed. So in this in this case, I will just give emphasis on the layers or stages which we were not able to cover in the SVM model. So the feature learning uh, stage is a very crucial stage which includes two primary sub-processes and these are the convolution and the pooling layers. Every CNN has their own way of combining these layers to efficiently classify objects and later on, I will show you the architecture of the two basic CNN models that we have presented previously from, from the other video, and that is to classify objects. And we will be showing you the properties of each classification model and the capabilities that they have provided. So let's begin with the convolution layer. So convolution layer works the same with filters. All right. So the input image on this filters or the convolution layer will be will be convolved with the filter, meaning it will be combined or it will be processed as uh, with the filter mask to generate a blurred or sharpened image and detected edges for image segmentation and analysis. Again, image segmentation, I have a separate video for that. If you want to, to deep dive on this process, you can refer back to my previous videos about image segmentation. Also, the goal of the filter is to downsize the original image using the filters. And for the viewers who missed my video on image restoration, you still can check on my channel so that you would be able to know how mean filters work. So the next layer on the feature learning stage is the pooling layer. So pooling is the process of extracting the features from the image and the convolutional layer, all right? And this will also follow the same process of sliding over the image with a, spe a specified pool size or kernel size. And this is what we did from our mean filters, right? And we have three types of pooling, which are average pooling, max pooling and mean pooling. So we already discussed how mean filters work and the process is almost the same. So for max pooling, the minimum or the maximum pixel value of the batch is selected. For mean pooling, the minimum pixel value of the batch is selected. So uh, the, the uh, mean and the max pooling is performed mathematically using the uh, matrices on the right hand side of my, uh, of my slide. The next stage is the flattening layer and flattening is converting the data into a one dimensional array for inputting it to the next layer. And we flatten the output of the convolutional layers to create a single long feature vector. And it is connected to the final classification model, which is called the fully connected layer. Now, the fully connected layer is where all the inputs from one layer are connected to every activation unit of the next layer. So in most popular machine learning models, the last few layers are full connected layers or fully connected layers, which compiles the data extracted by the previous layers to form the final output. Now we have the softmax, which extends the idea into a multi-class world. And that is softmax assigns decimal probabilities 
to each class in a multi-class problem. That is why this machine learning or image classification is just like a prediction. Now, we have several probabilities, and it depends on how many classes um, are, detect are to be detected using the layers. Now, softmax is implemented through a neural network layer just before the output layer. And the softmax layer must have the same number of nodes as the output layer. So if we have uh, two different output classes, our softmax layer is also two. All right. So the output layer is responsible for producing the final result. And there must always be one output layer in a neural network. And this, in this example, the output of the CNN is the cat class. And if we provide you, or if we go back to the previous uh, images or the input images of our um, of of our convolutional neural network, the image is a cat. There you are. So the original image is a cat, and then the convolved image is uh, the segmented or the um, the averaged filters, and then the pulled image is a downsized image using the mean pooling or the max pooling, and then we have the matrix form of the converted pool image, and then we have the flattened vector. We have the fully connected layer, which connects the softmax layer, and we have the output classes, which determines what would be the prediction of our machine learning to determine what is the object to be classified. So to show you some examples of the well-known CNNs, let me begin with AlexNet. And we are well aware of how this AlexNet work using our example from the previous video. And here are some of the features of AlexNet. Um, we have the AlexNet, which is, consists of five convolutional layers and three max pooling layers two normalization layers, three fully connected layers, and one softmax layer. And each convolutional neural network consists of the convolutional filters, and we have a rel u. The pooling layer are used to perform the max pooling. Again, we have the input size of the image converted or resized into 224 by 224, right? And in AlexNet, overall has 60 million parameters and over 600 million connections. And that is for the fully connected layers. So we also have mentioned about padding and padding here is simply the process of adding layers to zeros to input images to avoid the problems in convolution. And that is the three, if you can see the input size is 224 by 224, that three is what we call the padding, all right? And again, padding is there to avoid or to in included in the input images to avoid problems in convolution. Okay, so to show you again the code using the AlexNet you have there, and also the sample results of our um, image classification using AlexNet. Now, moving on to our next sample CNN, we have the GoogleNet. And displayed on the screen are some of the notable features of GoogleNet, which made it unique from the rest of the available CNNs and also compared with AlexNet. So GoogleNet, is a 22 layer deep, 27 pooling layers included, and there are nine inception modules. And this shows that GoogleNet is a bit intricate or higher versus AlexNet because AlexNet only has five convolutional uh, layers and three max pooling layers, though we have 22 layers deep here in GoogleNet, 27 pooling layers. So. The input size for GoogleNet is also 224 by 224. And look at this one. It doesn't have the pooling uh, or the, the uh, padding that we have for AlexNet, the, the times three that's being appended on the image size or the input size here. Uh, it's uh, straightforward 224 by 224 for the images. Now for GoogleNet, it possesses two or four million parameters. So um, the example here uh, is 
almost the same with what we've done using the AlexNet in the previous video. So the code is also right here for your reference. Now, that ends our discussion for the um, architecture, the components, and the layers of uh, GoogleNet and AlexNet, and also a quick introduction of what is a convolutional neural network and how we're going to um, appreciate uh, what the CNN or the, the machine learning can offer to us in creating our projects about image classification and image detection. So this ends my presentation. I hope you enjoyed this um, additional resource from the previous video. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, and support the video by sharing to your friends. So this ends my uh, video. Thank you so much. God bless everyone. Goodbye.